Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Weekly Team Meeting. We are the 9th January 2024. Today, we are four around the virtual table. Kevin Martin, Stéphane Merle, Hervé Lemeur, and myself, Damien Duportel. Mark White will join us later. Uh, first of all, a word about the new Weekly 2.440. Um, so, build failed. After two hours and <laughs> and thirty minutes, due to GitHub issues, so that means the release is currently delayed. Uh, I've asked someone to to trigger the build again, and uh, we will do it at the end of the meeting if it's not done. Um, uh, build to be retried. Looks like today uh, wasn't a good day for Microsoft. Uh, we don't see a lot of uh, things on the status web page until last minute, but yeah, we have had network issue yesterday and particularly this morning, and same on the GitHub data center. So I don't know what is at stake, but something is, someone cut the fiber. Right now they send the tweet X saying that the, that has been resolved. Yep, that's what status GitHub says, but yeah, we had a lot of network hiccups on the same data center. Anyway, so that means uh, uh, release delayed for a few hours. Um, do we have other announcements? I don't. Do you folks? Nope. Well, an experimental URL. Yes, survey, it's recording. Uh, if you don't have an announcement, a word on the upcoming calendar. So the next weekly for for one next week, of course, it will be 16. Is that correct? Oh no, I have an announcement. Sorry. <laughs> I won't be able to run the meeting next week. In two weeks, I will be able, and in three weeks, I won't be able. So I need two people to cover for me, one next week and one in three weeks. I will say the first one, Hervé, and the second one, Lemur. <laughs> Good try. Hervé, you need to defend yourself. <laughs> next week. And in three weeks. Hervé, are you around? Three weeks will be the twenty, the thirty. 30. And need someone to run the meeting for him. Don't worry, we, we, we will manage. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so next week is next week. Uh, zero one sixteen. Tomorrow is there is some I think it's release candidate. Is that correct for the next LTS? Next baseline, yes. Uh, RC. Yes, release candidate. Tomorrow. 2 point four two six point three. Four two six point three. Yes. Yes. Um and LTS happen next week. 24th of January LTS. This one, 2.426.3. Same number. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think everyone is on. Is there that day? Uh, it's a Wednesday. Should. Yes. Cool. I, 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 I'll be there as well. It's just to be sure. Two weeks. Okay. Is there any security announcement? Uh, no, there isn't any. And of course, major events will uh, will uh, force them Brussels. Uh, two, three, four of February. 
Uh, I saw Scalix, but I I forgot when uh, when is it, it is. I know that Mark and Alice are going are trying to go. Uh, scale. It's uh, March fifteenth, Damien. Thanks. March fifteenth. Uh, yep. So if you want to meet the infrastructure or project member. Most probably you will see people if you are on the West Coast uh, in March. Any announcement or calendar or question? Okay. So let's start with the this week milestone. So what are the tasks that we were able to finish? Uh, we helped the user who had issues with their account creation uh, because they they were still connected. So the solution since the anticipant triggered was for them was to clean the cache or use another web browser or private session. And they confirmed it was uh, it was okay. Um, we fixed an issue with the artifact caching proxy repo DO Jenkins IO, um, which was caused by Mark and High, whom forgot to clean up the ACP cache uh, two or three weeks ago when we finished the operation on the artifact origin frog, when we removed some of the mirror repositories to use Apache Maven for most, for some dependencies. Um, by doing so, we changed internal representation of the Maven dependency tree, which resulted on the ACP caching, caching something, which, which as a checksum changed compared to Apache Maven. So that was causing issues. The problem was resolved quickly by cleaning up, forcing a full cleanup of all the ACP instances. Any question? Uh, we had an issue with Jenkins Infra Contributor Spotlight project opened by Chris, which uh, spanned across different repositories. So uh, when we when we change coverage. Let me, we can cover this one. Uh, we also removed a plugin from our Jenkins instances that we should not have used. That plugin is an old one, no release since four years now. It's named GitHub Autostatus. Uh, that plugins ensure that when you have a pipeline running through GitHub branch source, it sends a GitHub check for each stage of the pipeline automatically. And there is no way to disable it. So we had checks on our pull request where each stage of the pipeline was sending um, was sending a new check. And we created uh, branch rule protection focused on some of these checks. So by removing the plugin, our jobs stopped sending, unless we had an explicit pipeline step, our job stopped sending implicitly and automatically per stage checks leading on blocked pull requests. So it has been fixed because we we have an alternative already present on our instances named GitHub uh, uh, Checks plugin, and that one can be configured through our Elm chart. So we did, at least on the update CLI jobs and on contributor spotlight, and we were able to change the branch protection rules. If you see other of the jobs on Jenkins Infra that are stuck with a pending state that never run and all the other checks are run, which means the pipeline started, sent some checks, but not the expected one, then that means we might have to do it. So reopen the issue and comment with the jobs on the problem and we can use it to fix. Any question? Okay. Thanks, Hervé, for the split Docker Jenkins weekly uh, and weekly CI. Can you just remind us the, the takeaway of uh, or the goal of that uh, task, please? The goal was to be able to differentiate uh, the plugins on each of these instances as, as weekly.ci.jenkins.io uh, is mainly a demo instance. So not my fault. Alex uh, wanted to remove uh, Blue Ocean and its dependencies from the weekly image which we blocked because we wanted to keep version for now on infra.ci.jenkins.io. So I've added a Docker bake 
to the repository allowing to uh, variabilize, uh, to parameterize uh, the plugin list depending on the instance we want. So now, um, a specific uh, weekly that said the Jenkins.io variant is available with the uh, by adding a dash weekly CI as suffix to the tag. Any question, the others? That's quite clear for me. Thanks. Um, forgot to clean ACP cache when changing gfrog config last month. Okay. Uh, there was a GitHub repository to be deleted, so no no action from the infra team here. It was uh, passed. Uh, another consequence of the GFrog uh, instances, thanks Basil for doing this. Um, so we created initially with Mark a local repository of funds where we, plan we were planning to upload and deploy all the specific artifacts required, which are not stored on our uh, release repository and not stored on Apache Central. Uh, but in fact, thanks for uh, the help uh, from Daniel and Basil, we learned that we could create a mirror repository from the former G Center that we wanted to remove. And we were able to filter using group ID artifact ID just a few artifacts. So that makes all funds to be deprecated. So it has been removed and uh, the proper filtering has been added to another name G Center of funds, which has just a few megabytes of artifact. And the goal is to upgrade all the plugin over time that will that use this. So that's G Center of funds should also be deleted in a few months. So thanks, Basil, for that. Uh, there has been a new GitHub application installed uh, only for the repository permission updater that allows uh, the specific elements.io channel integration. Uh, we used the IRC integration uh, back in time. So now we use the proper and modern elements.io room APIs. Uh, for manipulating RPU. So that allows the RPU administrators to accept uh, and drive the RPU changes and pull requests and such. So it's a kind of bot specific for that application. Uh, also, Alex uh, asked to be administrator on CI Jenkins IO. So we added him to the Jenkins admin, which is the group in which we define the additional admins just for CI Jenkins, it's not uh, another. The goal was to let him being able to replay jobs for Jenkins core and plugins. That helps a lot. Um, <clears throat> CI Jenkins IO only to allow replaying jobs. Uh, we had the help from a contributor around changing and removing the deprecated code coverage API plugin and replace it by the new modern coverage. So this one was easy to do on CI Jenkins IO, trusted and cert, and has consequences on infra CI and release as we saw. We had to remove a cobertura, which was in, in itself installed from uh, GitHub auto status. I don't know why the dependency, but what is sure is that this dependency chain wasn't needed at all on infra and release CI. And also CI Jenkins IO is now providing more badges. Uh, it used the coverage badges extension plugin, as we discussed uh, last week. We weren't sure, but after checking, there is no more uh, security issue on the uh, badge plugin. And now Mark and Darren Pop are um, uh, managing that plugin. So that's the reason for not making it suspicious. It has been modernized. So that was okay to install an addition, and we have a contributor happy with this uh, change. Have we have we seen any have we seen any problems since enabling that? Has there been any any dramatic increase in load or anything like that? Has anyone noticed any exceptions or? I haven't checked to be quite honest. Only checked metrics, and I we didn't see changes. Okay, Something so worth checking will be outbound bandwidth, though from mm -hmm. CI Jenkins IO controller. But I don't think that's a lot of volume 
because it's just tiny images. Uh, right. I believe uh, I remember Hervé uh, doing an evaluation and that was really low bandwidth when we were discussing about removing the batch plugin. So that looks good. But yeah, we know that if we see a lot of bandwidth on this one, that will be the first error. And we have to check the logs eventually. Thank you. Um, we fixed the crawler job issue. Uh, there was a lot of uh, interlast problems. Uh, first, we had uh, we had expired credentials from the new uh, update center uh, proof of concept. So we had uh, Azure storage account uh, credential, but also Cloudflare API and Cloudflare R2. So that was a good opportunity to first <clears throat> renew the token, renew the credential, of course. That was the core of the issue. Uh, also, we were able to restrict the IPs allowed to access these buckets on both clouds. For R2, it was easy, almost. <laughs> uh, for Azure, it was a bit more complicated. Uh, important to mention the, both of them. First, since the new subscription, um, we have two network per controller, per agent controller set. Uh, so we add to create additional NAT gateway for outbound fixed IP. So the reason is that using peer network on uh, Azure does not allow on our setup to have requests for the internet routed from one network to the other. It's technically possible, but that will require so much configuration for nothing compared to the cost of creating a NAT gateway and a public IP on the new subscription. So now for Trusted, for instance, we have two public IP. We have the public IP that request originating from the permanent agent and the, <clears throat> the former agents that we don't use for now and the public IP, the outbound IP for the agent ephemeral. We have the same on third CI. And we had to do this in order to allow restriction by IP for Cloudflare R2, because otherwise the IP were always changing. Uh, in the case of Azure, no use of outbound IP. So that's the trick. When you reach from an Azure network to a storage account, it doesn't use by default internal routing, but it doesn't use internet gateway with outbound IP routing either. It uses another network by Microsoft themselves, making the public IP unable to be determined. However, the documentation of Microsoft says, hey, if you need to go from a private network to another storage account through private routing, you only have to enable what is called an endpoint. That is something on each network when you have domain names such as whatever.sas.storage.microsoft.net. In that case, the requests are always routed from uh, the local gateway that send it through the Microsoft system. And then you can restrict by IP uh, by specifying the subnets, subnetwork, or the virtual network, or using Active Directory internally. In our case, we use subnets. So we, on, we only had for the update center bucket to specify the list of subnet where the request can come from. So trusted for writing it, private cluster because we need the agents uh, to manipulate it through Terraform. And I realized yesterday that I forgot the public network so that our container can mount the bucket. I think write this down or I will, or I will forget. Only subnet and endpoints. Warning, missing public for updates. Jenkins IO. I forgot this, but I realized yesterday. Um, and finally, Stefan started a work of using update CLI for detecting the close expiry. Update CLI to detect expiration and open a pair, a pull request, so that updately run and say, oh, 
it will expire in 10 days. Oh, let's open a pull request proposing to change the expiry date. This one should then require an action from us, meaning reviewing the change, uh, eventually uh, letting the other know, merging the pull request, and then manually retrieve the new generated credential and update it on the location where it should be. So at least we will have an actionable on the expiration date, which is way more than just an alert. It's a pull request ready to action, and then we can continue further. Is that a good summary, Stefan, or did I miss something on the work right. you're doing on that part? I think it's perfect. You say that well. Cool. Any question? Okay, so the next task is declarative pipeline migration assistant plugin no longer compiled. That's also another consequence of the GFROG operation we did last month. Uh, so we added some dependencies on the gcenter orphans. They were used to fix the compilation. And then uh, maintainer, including Basil and Mark, worked on upgrading uh, the dependency itself. So we don't need the whole dependency only existing on gcenter. And instead, the dependency use modern version served from the Apache Central. So that allowed us to remove some of these dependencies. Dependency, uh, another GFrog operation sequence, uh, and updating dependencies helped to remove the problem. Any question? Okay, so moving to the next one. Uh, DNS domain, nothing to say. It was renewed as expected and closed. So thanks, uh, Tyler, for sponsoring the Jenkins project. Uh, next one, uh, get Jenkins IO is now using the mirror bits parent chart, which is the brand new chart built by Hervé in the context of the new update center proof of concept that allows us to control separately the two or three components and to avoid repetition of some uh, critical elements, specifically the persistent volume used and served by both mirror bits and Apache. So side consequences now, HTTPD run on IRM64. So less workload for the Intel. Um, did two downtime while doing that operation. One was uh, anticipated yesterday. Uh, no, no, today was anticipated, my bad. Yesterday was, it should not have been the downtime, but I did a dumb mistake. I forgot one of the TLS setup. So get Jenkins IO during two minutes was answering, hey, I don't have a proper certificate for TLS. Okay, but you detected it within minutes. Uh, yes, the total unavailability was 2 minutes and 15 seconds. That's Excellent. already too much for a typo like this. Uh, yes, but, yes, but it, it was better 2 minutes than 2 hours. Thank you. And prove that you're not a robot. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> uh, today, there was uh, another consequence. Due to the way Elm work, uh, since part of the plan was to rename and rotate, so the idea was to remove the former mirror bits chart, which has a hole in one, and replace it by mirror bits parents. Done. But one of the sub chart you, was named mirror bits light, and that one had to be renamed mirror bits to anticipate the future if there is an official mirror bits chart. But when you change the chart, Elm is a piece of crap that say, hey, I will reinstall everything because I don't want to reuse the existing resources. Or you can try to edit a 500 big encrypted file on the secret on Kubernetes that is a big JSON and YAML, a mix of both, that points to all the history of all the resources and change. And you can ensure that each annotation maps to each element of the file one by one. That would so have you been... mean you're a robot, in fact, OK. 
Uh, no, uh, I, 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 t I told the Elm to uninstall and reinstall the whole thing. Uh, and it took five minutes instead of two minutes because uh, Azure was not really in good shape this morning. Uh, it's not better this afternoon, but yeah, I had to relaunch the, the job free time. So yeah. Uh, five minutes due to Elm chart network issue. But now, um, HTTPD is, thanks to this change, is running in read-only. So any uh, corruption of HTTPD cannot allow to write files on that, uh, on that directory. So the next one will be mirror bits. But now any change on the mirror bits parent chart will be usable on both services, which mean now, and that's important for both Stefan, I, and Hervé, when we do a change on mirror bits parent starting from now, we cannot merge it as soon as possible like we used to, to do, because we used to have a proof of concept and we don't care if you break it. And by the way, it's broken today. However, now we have to be careful because we can break it Jenkins, when we deliver a new version of that chart. Got it. Is there any question? No? Okay. Uh, tuning not pool size. So the goal was to start uh, the spending less money. Uh, thanks to the RM64 services on the public cluster migra already migrated. In order to do that, we had to pack the remaining Intel services, such as Mirrorbit itself or ACP. Some will be migrated easily, such as ACP. Some will be will require additional effort, such as the LDAP, and some have uh, an undefined uh, deadline, such as mirror bits, because despite the new maintainer, we haven't seen a new version yet. So right now, uh, we were able to, to gain 25% on the theoretical monthly costs. That has to be checked this month because we uh, um, Stefan work on shrinking the size of the Intel nodes. So twice the size, twice the price, uh, half the size, half the price, that's better that way. Uh, and what we realized is that some of our services were requesting too much memory. Their nine first quartile were clearly below what they requested. So we were able to pack the request while keeping the limits as a, as a threshold for killing these services in case something goes wrong. By doing that, we decrease, were able to decrease from five to three tiny nodes, which effectively is uh, three quarter of the two big nodes, what we used to have before. So now the next step will be continue, uh, finish what we can on RM64, ACP, um, LDAP, and I think there is a fourth one, but I don't remember which one. Any question? And finally, congratulations, Hervé. Digital Ocean gave us 20K for this year as a sponsor. So that means we don't have to move again Archive Jenkins IO, and that allows us to use Archive Jenkins IO as a fallback for Get Jenkins IO. That will solve a lot of our issues because we can pay for the outbound bandwidth, which is cheap, but still we have to pay for some. So thanks, Hervé. I believe DigitalOcean asked us on the private channel if we can emit a blog post and or present something. Hervé, is it still okay? We discussed that yesterday, you and hi. Is it still okay for you to take care of or at least lead that part with yeah, our sure. help? Here? Cool. And and we had the request from DigitalOcean to be sure that we put them as an uh, on an attribution page, on a sponsor page. Basil Crow has an action item from our governance board meeting that we're reworking to create a dedicated sponsors page and put DigitalOcean in the correct location there. Right now they're listed, but only a single hyperlink. Their sponsorship is probably enough to get them into second from the very top tier. It's that there's their sponsorship top tier. There's likely only one sponsor, CloudBees, that's that big, but the others are... Yeah, so they, they would be on par with GitHub and with JFrog and others. 
So that's cool. Yeah. Thanks for the help then. Any other question on digital ocean and stuff? Okay. Uh, next one then. Uh, okay, no, that was the last one. We had two issue closed as not planned. Don't want to spend time on these two. These were, uh, um, yeah, uh, invalid issues. And now work in progress. So for each of these issues, we have to evaluate and see if we keep them uh, for the next milestone and what's the status of each. So Alex opened uh, an issue about since the 5 of January, um, some tests on the Jenkins core pull request was uh, reaching a timeout, making all the build failing. Uh, initial assumption by Alex was because it was the day when we deployed a new Linux age and version 1.45. We, try, we tried with the new version 1.46 and still the timeout. Then we tried to roll back yesterday and still the timeout. And today now that everything is back to normal with the latest available version, it looks like it's working. I have no idea. It's only on the JDK 17 and 21. Well, but JDK 17 and 21 are the only ones that we test right now. We're not testing Java 11 in general, but we're seeing timeouts. Uh, we were seeing timeouts until the artifact caching proxy reset on on bill of materials. So my 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 theory was ACP, and that your your flushing the cache and resetting it has has done what we needed done. Except for Java 21, this Java 21 thing, we we have a separate issue. Absolutely, uh, but yeah, JDK 11. Oh, JDK 11 is still did, tested there. Oh, my mistake. Good. Yes. Okay. And uh, Windows 17 was working. Ah, JDK okay, 11 so then... looks like sometimes it works or it doesn't, and 17 and 21 were always failing. Hmm. So the yeah. The ACP could be something since we flushed it, but that was hard to extract because yeah, it, it's hard to deep dive on the test report because Jenkins report, there is a failure on the test, but which test, what does it do? What is the exact output of the test? I mean, that was hard to find these issues. Right. But the good thing is that now I've replayed the pull request and the test is no longer failing on any GDK. So... That should be good. I will let uh, Alex close the issue when it's confirmed. Once it's confirmed. Any question on this issue? Should be closable to be confirmed by Alex. Uh, next one. So every volunteer to drive this topic. So we had a request for this GSOC project about having a docs Jenkins IO. So that's uh, one of the outcome of this year. And the goal is to have a version documentation of Jenkins. So that requires some infrastructure action from the domain name to preparing the production hosting system, defining the builds, ex deployment, etc. So that's a bit the same idea as the current Jenkins IO and the work that already did on contributor spotlight, except that won't be the same architecture, of course. Jenkins IO will use uh, will be hosted by us and not by uh, Fastly. We will uh, by Netlify. We will need the Fastly in front of the project. So there might be subtle differences. So Arvis, is that still okay for you to take care of that topic as well? Yeah. Yes. Cool. So we keep it to the next milestone then. Hervé leads, DNS, architecture, etc. Any question on this topic? So, I, yeah, question for me. So the intent is to use Fastly for this, even in this early stage. It doesn't cost anything. Ah, oh, good. Us, okay. I don't think All right. so. Very good. Okay, I, I wasn't aware. So that's great. That's wonderful. I, I I was assuming we couldn't do it with Fastly. If if you're saying it's it's doable, let's by all means do it. Great. Thank you. Um, 
something that need to be thought because we forgot to do it for contributor spotlight uh, we need a, a runbook that will describe the service and all the architectural elements that might be even mandatory before even deploying the service itself um, i don't mind helping for the contributor spotlight or to this one uh, but yeah we need this runbooks in order to document what we do because when the service goes down and we have to analyze it, searching the issue with uh, thousands of commands won't be uh, won't be possible at all. So that's why we need a way to represent this with a runbook that just gives the main pointers, links to code, but that should be some kind of glue between the bricks. We need a runbook. I mean, Contributor Spotlight is easy. It's a tiny website, but Docs, Jenkins, IO will start to be a major thing once we will have migrated. So that's why we need this. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Yeah, sure. No question? No, not for me. Okay. So the next issue is uh, Daniel reported an issue with Uplink. It's not top priority, but uh, that issue was uh, a word download failure when we were using uh, data from 2023, just the Christmas days. Uh, what happened is that the data on the table is corrupted. So currently working a few uh, PostgreSQL internal log indexation, vacuum, and searching for the port on the corrupted segments, and we'll see if we can fix it. Um, that might be also, so it has 300 billion uh, records on the table events. So maybe we will have to start thinking about either moving part of this whole data to a cold storage, change the application, but there might be something because it won't scale indefinitely. And right now, select counts all on the table, for instance, even with the index, takes roughly 30 minutes and re-indexation of the whole table takes six hours. So PostgreSQL works, there is no problem, but it starts to be complicated to manage. Um, and how here, many lines? 300 billions. Okay. <laughs> Yes, that's a lot of events. I mean, I mean, that's huge. Okay. Not from my point of view uh, after 10 years using PostgreSQL, but it's the problem is not do we have a lot of records or not. The problem is that it's a single table with a single model. It's hard to operate. So sometimes we need, uh, yeah, I already forgot the, the wording, uh, but yeah, separating on different indexes such as having a whole table or something on cold storage, but yeah. Anyway, uh, it's currently a running work. I'm logging, by the way, uh, all the documentation and command running. It's a screen running on background on the private VPN machine because it has a, a network interface on the public DB network. And that is yes to run and anyone can operate if I'm gone. So yeah, uh, trying to, to write this down. Uh, it takes time, but it's not a priority as we mentioned last week. So if you, we search for uh, ideas, yes, uh, working on the uplink uh, modernization or at least uh, stability could be uh, could be good. Any question? Nope. Okay. Uh, Java twenty one intermittent out of memory error. <laughs> I feel like this one will be funny. So basically, uh, some builds on Jenkins uh, fails sometime, but not always, with an out of memory issue. Um, I can't explain why do we see out of memory, but the builds continue at least closing the gap. Out of memory, OM kill will have the agent killed and the retry to happen, but Maven should not be able to finish their process. So there is something I don't understand here. The OM seems to be reported by the GVM process itself. So maybe it's a child process of the GVM that has been OM killed. 
and reporting on kill, but yeah, not really sure. Um, we have to check carefully. We have the name of the agent. We should check the logs on Datadog and metrics. And also, Basil gave us some hints. Uh, one of the pointers here is that we are only using four or eight gigabyte memory pods. I don't remember. Trying uh, these builds on a pull request used to using virtual machines instead of container agent could also help because our virtual machines have a lot way more memory because it might be just a bit more memory is required. Um, I believe we need help uh, here uh, because yeah, that that can be time consuming for non Java uh, easy users. However, since it has uh, infrastructure related, yeah, there, there's a fine balance to find. I wasn't aware, so important to share it. There is a gvm.config on .mvn, so Maven reads these settings and add them to the usual settings XML. So maybe this one can be changed or we could increase the size, uh, the memory size of the agent. So, so back to the, the logic then was that we're not, it's not that the pod is being killed, but that the Java process is being killed in that's executing inside the pod. One of the Java processes. Ah, that's okay. the thing. Right. One, because okay. if, it's, if it's the Java process, then the world pod. Hmm. Or is it the agent reporting OM killed? Hmm. That, that need to be investigated. Okay. Uh, but yeah, we have to work on this one. It's not a blocker, as Mark mentioned last week, uh, you are retraining, but it's it start to be uh, quite the annoyance. And yeah, I mean, GDK 21 full support is important. Um, I've read recently, I will share on the issue, the new garbage collector on GDK 21, by the way, has some weird behavior. It uses a multi mapping memory. So it's not OM killed and it's not directly related. But we can see way more memory used than allowed without being OM killed. Because uh, the I think that's the RSS part of the allocated memory, which is reported as used three times. So you see the global summed up value while you only use on the physical memory just a third of this. I will share the article with you folks, but that can be interesting when you look at GDK21 uh, memory dumps or memory metrics on Datadog, which might be the case here. Uh, next issue, still the GGIT cloning not converting line ends on Windows. So last week, uh, uh, another contributor confirmed the same thing as what Jem saw, that yeah, when using container agent Windows for GDK, it work, but not when using uh, our Windows virtual machine agents. So is it related to the way we configure agent? I mean, it used two different plugins that spawn the agent process on two different ways. So that could be the agent process starting with different setups, having a direct impact on GGIT. Or is it something on the environment of this container virtual machine that differs and that GGIT reads from the Git installation? Or is it something else? I still don't know. Mark, you said you wanted to take that issue. Uh, I don't know if you have clues or pointers here on your area. And I, I think we've got enough here. Let's keep it with me. Um, mm -hmm. There's some difference between virtual machine and non-virtual machine that needs to be explored further. I think I think it's very fair for me to be the one who investigates it. I've I'm certainly well connected to the Git plugin and have plenty of shame about some of the code in it. <laughs> okay, thanks. So let's keep it open and on the next milestone. It's not a blocker. If right. you see a contributor with that problem, just ask them to update once and migrate to Unix online all the file on their repository, and then their problem will be fixed. Yeah, is and I have no objections if we drop it from the next milestone and say Mark will get to it when he gets to it. I'm okay with that as well. It's either is fine. Okay. Because it's in terms of I'm much more concerned about the intermittent memory 
memory failure on Java 21 builds because those are affecting Jenkins core, right? This one, James's James Nord's workaround is working just fine. So, so while it's a real, it's a real problem, it's not nearly as interesting to the community, I think, as Java 21 is, or as the Java 21 builds are. Okay. In this table. Okay. Uh, I took I moved to backlog that issue. Uh, symbol inkling for latest from Windows table. I will do back to backlog because we need which one? It's Blobix fair. Let me. Um, need a Z copy as requirement below. So nothing to say. Uh, Ervish, Blobix fair versus AZ copy. I remember that you did stuff before going on holidays. Can you report the status here just for the sake of sharing? Um, I'm trying to use a service, um, uh, service account to generate the SS token for the file share instead of uh, using uh, always using the same file uh, SS token. As Tim Jacom uh, uh, mentioned that it was uh, a bit critical to use a uh, SS token. Uh, my last test from last, uh, end of December, I um, I need to check if I can use this uh, generated SS token with file share. Which is not sure at the moment. I don't know no. uh, how we will proceed if we can't do them. So, based on the work Stefan and I did last week uh, on the ACS token that was expired, um, it looks like we should be able to revoke the SAS token if we change the expiry date. If it's the case, we just have to write a runbook and we can revoke if the token is uh, um, is shown accidentally in clear. If not working, then we have to confirm that SAS token can be revoked through expiration date since we have a rotation uh, by changing expiration date uh, it's a free month windows in our case that we decided that could be a solution just revoke by moving it in the past is that okay for you rv yes um is there so is there something else in that area uh, no, I have to start working on it again. Cool. Uh, migration leftover from publicates to RM64. So that's, these are the last survivors on Intel. Uh, okay, artifact caching proxy. Yeah, Datadog and Falco, we don't care because these are demon sets. So we remove the machine and the demon set remove. However, mirror bit, so it's still problematic. We still have key cloak and LDAP. And for update Jenkins IO, same idea as mirror bits. We have HTTPD and sync already in IRM64, but still mirror bits running on Intel. So uh, I don't know, uh, Stefan and I see Stefan dropped, he might have a network issue. Uh, Stefan and I are sharing the work here. Artifact caching proxy should be easy to do. Uh, expect something later today or tomorrow. LDAP will be a piece of work because it looks like uh, from what I saw this morning, we haven't updated the LDAP image since quite some time now. So we don't have an automated update of the LDAP system. So it's not public facing because it's restricted by IP for access. However, we should start by updating to a recent version, see if we don't broke anything and then update to RM64. Uh, so that will be the next step for next milestone. Any question on that topic? 
next ACP is E, then LDAP. Need to update it first. Uh, the reason why I'm worried about LDAP is because uh, when we did RM64 for VPN, the CPU changes when changing the cryptographic libraries was having sometimes different behavior that were on, that were blocking and required a reconfiguration with a way more modern setup. It's not a problem. That means we will enforce cryptographic systems, but that takes its toll on the configuration part initially. Um, okay, I see Stefan. Uh, so, uh, Stefan, not there. Uh, export download mirror list to a textual representation. So, Hervé, would you be okay to pair with Stefan on that area? Because Stefan built part of the reports. And we discussed, uh, uh, you and I, about the reporting of the build failure on trusted such as crawler. So since Stefan already worked on the part of how to publish files on report Jenkins IO, then the two of you should be able to pair on working on uh, first providing a JSON, a, a real life API, but that will be a JSON file, but well shaped and well named to publish all of our outbound inbound IP, not only the, the one from mirror orbit. So we could provide a proper uh, actionable for our users. And then you could switch to the experience learned from that task to start working on the using report Jenkins IO to report and create Datadog alerts about, hey, we have crawler failing or we have AirPayer failing on Trusted. Is that yes, okay sir. for you? Yeah. On reports. So I let you coordinate. You need to absolutely pair on that topic. Um, Next step, she's an API um, to add outbound IP, for instance. Is there any question on that topic? No. OK. Uh, Infra CI Jenkins IO on RM64. Um, so for this one, uh, okay, it was Stefan. I hope nothing wrong with our friend. Oh. Uh, so what was done now? Kubernetes uh, management is using an RM64 agent with the all-in-one image. So the last mile will be to drop any remnant of Docker N file image. So one less image to maintain. Yeah. Uh, next step, Stefan started to work earlier today on the Terraform jobs, which are also using their own image that we maintain, Docker Agicorp tools. So here we also have the same idea. Stefan is working on the usage. It's on the pipeline library. He will have now to try one of the jobs on a draft pull request. And if it's used properly with all the tools, then he can merge it and use it everywhere and then clean up the image. The goal as a reminder is for us to only have a wall in one image defined as an administrator pod template on infra CI like we do for CI Jenkins IO. So when there is, for instance, an AWS command line updates, like every week, multiple times, we only have one image to update, the Packer image all in one. And that the benefit is that we can use RM64 for the agent in that case. Side note. That was also the case for Stefan when building that generic uh, template. It, we detected that some of our jobs are running agent on the same virtual machine than the controllers for infra CI and release CI. That should be uh, removed as soon as possible. So moving to RM64 is a way for us to do it efficiently. Because when it runs RM64, it's a different network and a different mod pool, so different virtual machines. In the short future, Stefan proposed to also create a new cluster on the subscription. So we should be able to run agent for infra CI at least on the new subscription and not having to pay on our system. But more on this later uh, this month. So Stefan should keep working on this one for the cost reduction project. 
Is there any question? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, so Docker n file done. Next step, Terraform. Uh, Goss, no action done since last week. Uh, Stefan was focused on RM64. Um, I think almost there. No action done. Almost there though. So I propose not to put it back to backlog. And uh, since we did all of the EV lifting, I will try to help Stefan on that part if he's not able. We we'll prefer him working with Hervé on the reports and other tasks. That one is just a few goes. I think the learning curve is good enough for anyone on the team being able to change here. Is that okay for you, Hervé? Yes. The, the hidden question is, unless you want to help Stefan finish this one yourself to learn more about the ghost thing, I don't mind either. Mm, I'll see you with the time I get this week. Okay. Uh, we have Chinese websites. I believe uh, that was a, a work in progress, but with the holidays, it would, no work was achieved on this one. That realistically, um, do you think you will have time to spend on this week, or do you want us to move this to this, backlog? This week, no. This week is just too busy, and I, I'm right now the bottleneck on that one as well. Okay. No work to be done this week. Good. And finally, updates Jenkins IO. So I'm gonna report this time since Irvi was uh, was off. So be, uh, before Christmas, we were waiting for Daniel to to review, um, waiting for review by Jensec, uh, but uh, they were busy on holidays and stuff. Um, so now, as we mentioned with the crawler, improved uh, token management, expiration and IP restriction, which is a good thing. Uh, the service is failing. Service is not working. Uh, Ersing the pod failing to start uh, due to mount permission error. So we need to fix this as soon as possible. Uh, detected this while working on the Gage Jenkins IO mirror bits parent chart. It started a few days ago, so it's a recent change. Looks like related to Ersing the update. I believe it might be related to the non-root permission of the RCD process while trying to mount and access the Azure file system. So go to check in detail uh, because yeah, that was inside deep inside Kubernetes. That could also be a problem, an issue with the updates, Jenkins IP restriction. So still not sure, so need to work on this one. Uh, most probably we'll have to retrieve log. If I'm not the one to do it, uh, the goal is to check the logs of the CSI uh, daemon set agent running on the same virtual machine where the pod is scheduled, the failing pod, because the CSI will, will give logs about why it was forbidden to mount inside the process. And then we could have in, so that the next, uh, next step. Which, by the way, delayed performance test. Is there any question on that topic? I believe that two next week will be full for the near or the ginseng tip. Is that correct, Mark? Sorry, ask that question again. Um, uh, I believe uh, that ginseng team will be full for the two upcoming next week. Is that correct? Yes, right. They're busy. So, I... So most probably we only do tiny things on the new update center, but that globally delay. Uh, Daniel right. is aware about the cost reduction here. We have discussed this last week. So he will do his best, but yeah, right now uh, security is uh, way more important than the cost reduction here. Exactly. Yeah, we there is pressuring this thing to arrive prematurely would be bad for the Jenkins project. Let's not do that. Thanks. So that's all for the, the task. Let's see if we have issue to try age. 
we don't have new issues to triage. Oh, eventually, Jira uh, login page, so yeah, the problem. Uh, is there another topic you want to add uh, on the backlog, on the milestone, or you want to discuss as part mm -hmm. of the, this meeting? No, no, it's good to me too. Cool. Then thanks for the work, folks. I'm going to stop screen share. I'm going to stop recording. So see you next week for people following us on the recording. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.